at this point, it's it's a big scene. There's a range of sort of subgenres and things going on. At the same time, the the best known Australian rapper over here is of course Iggy Azalea. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> how do oh you, man, how do, you, how do you feel about that? Well, I mean, the less I say about her, the better, as far as I'm concerned. No, no, no. I, I mean, I bring her up because you've been critical of Australian rappers sounding American, too American uh, well, when they rap. I don't know about that. I mean, in in the 90s and the early 2000s, there was this big accent debate. I don't know if there was ever anything like that here. Um, I was talking to someone earlier who was saying that it used to be very Caribbean-influenced and kind mm-hmm. of uh, Patois-influenced Toronto hip-hop, and then has slowly become a lot more Americanized. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, you can't help it when, when you adopt a culture from somewhere else, you can't help but be influenced by the accents, by the sound. So there are a lot of Australian rappers that would rap in an American accent early on. It's natural. And then, yeah, it's yeah. natural, I think. But then it became this kind of controversy. You were either in this one camp that rapped like a, a, a quote-unquote Yankee, and then, uh, or you were this kind of beer and barbecue rapper who rapped in your real Aussie accent and kind of really overplayed it. Um, and now I think it's kind of settled somewhere in the middle and it's mm-hmm. a bit more chilled. You know, we've, we've matured a lot. But, I mean, Iggy Azalea, actually I said the less... I say about her, the better. She, she brings up some pretty interesting issues because I think what she was doing was almost like this verbal type of blackface. Like, I mean, what, what accent is she trying to put on there? Like, it's weird, you know? She's from a small town called Mullumbimby, a rural Australian town, and then she, she speaks in a certain way, and then suddenly when she raps... I don't know what she's trying to sound like. Was she um, known in Australia before she was known uh, in North America? No, I mean, I think this is part of the thing. She moved across to Atlanta, I think, when she was about 16. Okay. And she was obviously drawn to this type of black culture down south. Um, but I think, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people have spoken about it in public, but it's, it's one thing to be drawn to black culture and to be a part of it. But when you don't show allyship to other parts of black culture when it starts to get hard... I mean, that to me is deeply problematic. Is that the line for you in terms of uh, we're having so many conversations about cultural appropriation? Right. Is that the line for you? Like, does the embrace have to be complete? So not just this sort of glamorous aspects of a culture or in someone's opinion, beautiful aspects, but also having to embrace um, the struggles? I think so. You have to embrace it with respect and with research and also acknowledgement with hip hop that it is a music born of struggle and born of oppression. You know, it's it, it, the, the joy and the entertainment of hip-hop comes out of a certain element of pain. And yes, as a Malaysian-Australian born across the other side of the world, I will never completely understand that pain. But I can acknowledge it and mm-hmm. I can be an ally, you know, and I can, I can embrace it when people are going through struggles. Uh, and I think she's failed to do that. And she's also, even in terms of Australia, she said some quite disrespectful things about Aboriginal people, or at least ignorant things, and sort of battened down the hatches and become defensive and so I don't think she, maybe she's some horrible person, but uh, I, I don't necessarily think it's a good thing that she was the best known Australian rapper. 